Our God arrives clothed in frail human flesh, riding a meek donkey's foal. This is not the first time you have come to us, O oh God. The history of human affairs is the history of your arrival among us. As creator, purpose giver, liberator, and prophet's voice. The story of each of our lives is the story of your presence among us. As comforter, friend, example, challenger, abundant life provider. And so we praise you. Open our eyes to your presence, God. Hosanna, save us again, God. And be glorified among us. For you are our God, and your love endures forever. For you are our God, and your love endures forever. Good morning, church. Did you hear that? You heard that. Let's say that again. For you are our God, and your love endures forever. Stand up and let's sing to that. song today. I don't think you know it. I don't know, but maybe you do. And um, I want to uh, say that this song comes from a tradition of mostly from the black churches where I learned it when I was doing a lot of gospel music, but maybe you already know it. And it's a little, it's a wonderful greeting where the first person says, God is good. And the next person answers, all the time. The second first person says, all the time, God is good. Okay, so let's practice that. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. All right. Now, Morris Chapman has taken this little greeting that's uh, very, very common, and you can say that to in almost any church that you go into that believes in the Bible, the Bible maybe, <laughs> and, and say, God is good, and you're going to hear all the time, maybe. I hope. Anyway, so Morris Chapman has taken this and he's broken it down to a little song 
And several other people have written songs like this, but I like Morris Chapman's, and he's written it to where we sing, God is good, the leader sings, God is good, and you echo, God, God is good. And then my leader sings, all the time, and then you echo, all the time. And I'm gonna teach that to you. I'm gonna start out and sing the first part. God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. This is different. God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. Okay, now we're gonna start to sing this song and the part you don't know, we all sing together. And you'll learn it because these wonderful people up here know how to sing this. And we might have an instrumental in the middle of it, so just be ready for that. Ground us in the presence of that spirit of goodness that even when we face the uncertain wilderness, we might believe in the promise that you are in fact good. In the midst of our grief, in the midst of our pain and our regret and our guilt and shame, give us a glimpse of that goodness to sustain us. In your holy name we pray, amen. Amen. Please be seated. 
Welcome, welcome to worship with Tibbetts United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Sarah. A gift, a gift, a joy to be in the presence of God and one another this morning. If this is your first time here, know that you are in the house of God where you are loved just as you are. Just as you are, no strings attached, you are beloved. And if you're joining us for the first time, whether online or in person, we are really glad that you are here. Your presence with us is a gift to us, and we hope that you being here will be a gift to you as well. In the back of the pew in front of you, there's a yellow Connect card. We invite you to take a moment to fill that out. You can drop it in the offering plate at the back of the sanctuary following the service, and we will uh, reach out to you. It's an opportunity for us to connect, for us to connect, and there's no pressure. It's actually just about being able to know you and for you to know what this community is about. And if you're joining us online, there's a link to a virtual Connect card. We invite you to take a moment um, and fill that out as well. Later on in the service, uh, we're going to pray together and we're going to name out loud our joys and celebrations and our concerns and our struggles. There's a green prayer card in your pew. I invite you to fill that out and I'll collect them uh, following the sermon. And if you're joining us online, you can drop your prayer request in the chat and we'll be sure to include them. Uh, we also have a couple prayer stations in the sanctuary, one up here. You can light a candle at any time during the service as a way to offer your prayer to God. And there's one in the back, um, a piece of driftwood with slips of paper. You can write your slips of paper on there, fold it up and place that uh, in the driftwood. Today is Palm Sunday. Today is Palm Sunday. And it's the day that we remember and we celebrate uh, when Jesus entered the holy city of Jerusalem. And I don't know about you, but this season of Lent has been a long journey. Like, February was a long month. March is turning out to be a long month. Has that been true for anybody else here? 2024 already feels so long, and the election hasn't even happened yet. So everybody, get ready, right? It's been a long journey, and today, uh, today is a turning point in that journey. Uh, today is the day where we catch a glimpse, where we experience the hope of what is and what has been and what might be. That is what today is about. So I invite you um, to come and stand in that liminal space with me this morning. And one of the things we do every, every week when we gather uh, is we know the importance of connection. Connection is holy and sacred, and it's the way that we resist we resist our dominant culture of isolation, a way we resist the message that we always have to go it alone. And so we intentionally connect through the ritual of greeting each other because that is a way that we are reminded that we are in fact in this together. And so I invite you to turn to your neighbor and look them in the eye, make eye contact, see them, know that they are a vessel for the divine presence, for God's love, Look your neighbor in the eye and be reminded that they too are made in the image of God and that we together walk this path alongside each other. So I invite you to turn, greet each other with the peace of Christ, look each other in the eye and connect. And if you're joining us online, please drop your name in the chat, introduce yourself and connect with one another. Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Are you, you going to do it in here? Just do it in the foyer, because you're next. But I'll, I'll uh, he pooped. The baby. Oh, yeah, if I'm hot, Keith, can you turn my mic off? <laughs> Yikes. Talking about the, the baby. Sorry, people who can hear me online. Hey, hey Ev. Uh, concrete. concrete. Yeah. Mason. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, it's like I. Okay, you know what? I actually have a lot of my
I'm just trying to give him a little bit of time since they're changing that diet. Oh, yes. But they are wrapping up, so now is probably a good time. Yeah. Oh. Should probably do it now. oh, yeah, I know. I already apologized to the people on the live stream talking about the baby we're baptizing. Yes, the baby we're baptizing is having a diaper change, so now you all know on the live stream. <laughs> I invite you to make your way to your seat, make your way to your seat. And I'd like to invite all of the children to come up and join me for a time with our young disciples. If you are young in age or young at heart, come on up. Oh, that was fast. Well done. Come on up. Yes. You are <laughs> young in age or young at heart, right? Age is a, is a state of mind. Age is a state of mind. <laughs> Welcome. Nice to see all of you. So do you know, uh, do you know what, what today is? Do you know what today is? Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Today, today is Palm Sunday. So you may notice, you may notice up here that we have, um, we have all of these branches. We have all of these branches. And um, does anybody know what kind, of, what kind of branch this is? What is it? It's a fern. Ferns are the palms of the Pacific Northwest. So we, we have these palms, these ferns, uh, because we remember that on this day, we remember um, the time when Jesus entered into the holy city of Jerusalem, and all of the people um, were so excited because this meant that things were going to change. They were going to change, and they believed that Jesus had come to bring that change. And so they took whatever they could find. They took branches off the ground. Uh, they took their coats, and they laid them out like a red carpet for Jesus so he could um, ride over them right into the holy city. And they waved those palms, and they said, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. And Hosanna means save us. Save us, O oh God. We um, walked in here this morning. Um, Esther, Esther saw this and she said, what is this mess? <laughs> and you know what? When I saw the picture of this, the liturgical arts team set this up on Friday and sent me a picture, I thought, where am I going to stand to preach? Because it goes right down the middle of this platform. But here's the thing. That is so theological because Palm Sunday is kind of a mess. And the reason it's kind of a mess is because we stand, like I said, between what is and what will be. And the truth is, we don't know where to stand. We're in that in-between space, and that is where we are on Palm Sunday. So we welcome the mess. We welcome the mystery. And you know what? We have uh, sacraments that we practice in the church, and we call them a means of grace, a way that we experience a God's love. And, and what sacraments do is they help ground us when we're in that in-between space. When we take the bread of life and the cup of love, it grounds us, it gives us sustenance. And when we baptize someone, we are naming them beloved. And especially when we baptize a baby, right? Because we baptize a baby, and we have no idea who that baby is going to grow up to be. All we know is that right now they are here, and we have hopes and dreams for that baby, but we don't know who they will grow up to be. And so we're in that in-between place, like Palm Sunday, uh, that in-between place of, of what is and what is to come. And God is so good that God has given us a baptism this morning. And God, God um, made a way for this gift. Uh, yesterday, uh, my family was at a birthday party um, celebrating Taeun's first birthday. And it's so special because uh, Taeun has so many people that love him. Um, his mom and dad, Thomas and Hyunjin, and I've known them for like 15 years. Isn't that crazy? Thomas is an ordained elder in the United Methodist Church, and he's my friend. Do you have friends? Do you have friends? He's my friend, and he's my colleague, um, and he's my colleague, and, and uh, he, 
he and I um, have this long-standing history. And so I, I said yesterday at the birthday party when I learned that Taeyun's grandparents are here, um, his grandparents are here, and they live really far away. They live in Korea, and they live in Chicago, and this perfect moment happened where they were all here, and we said, wow, we better seize this opportunity to baptize this baby and proclaim a public witness, to give Taeyun this anchor so as he goes through his life, he will always know that he is loved. And so um, I'm going to invite Hyunjin and Thomas to come up here with Taeyun, and I'm going to invite all of you to come up and gather around the baptismal font. Um, so mom and dad and Taeyun, if you would send, stand over here. And you, you, guys, you can come up. You all can come up. So you come and, and stand here. So, so this is this is what we do. Um, so, so Taeyun, yeah, you can just stand right there. So, so he um, he can communicate, and he has agency, as we know, our children have agency. Uh, but he he has not um, quite yet been able to speak for himself, to speak for himself. And so, um, his parents his parents speak on his behalf for now, for now. And I'm just going to invite you all to kind of part the waves a little bit so grandparents can be able to see. So, so you speak on, on uh, Taeyun's behalf. And so what you do is you make promises, promises of how you will model love and grace and compassion to him. So I have a few questions uh, for the two of you. Um, and the first is that do you, on behalf of this faith community, on behalf of the body of Christ throughout the world? Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, uh, repent of the, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, respond, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord, put your trust in his grace, and promise to serve him in union with the church that God has opened to all people, if so, respond with, I do. I do. Amen. Okay, kids, you can come up. You can come up. So when we baptize, what do we use when we baptize? Do we use orange juice? No. Do we use... Do we use bubbles? Water. Water? Why do we use water when we baptize? Because it's safe to use on your face. Because yep. Baby yep, it's safe to use, yep. Because they used to jump in the river. Because they used to jump in the river. Well, did you know that water is everywhere and we are made of water? And you, when you were a baby, were nurtured in the water of your mother's womb. And so we use water. And I'm going to ask, who would like to pour the water for us today? You come on up here. Yeah. Okay, Evan. So I'm going to invite you to pour the water. And kids, I'm going to invite you to come around. And parents and guardians, you can come up and, and um, pick up your kids. And we are going to bless this water. Go ahead, all of it. And, and pour it up high. Be really dramatic because this is, this is God's drama. Yes. Yes, you can see the water. You can see the water. So now we bless this water because water is holy and sacred. So I invite you, you can put your hand in there, Taeyun. Feel that water. Feel that water. Oh God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on an ark through water. And after the flood, you set a rainbow in the clouds. And when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the Red Sea, and you brought them to the land of the Jordan that you had promised. And so in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, who grew in the water of a womb. <laughs> He was baptized by John in the Jordan, anointed by your spirit, and he called his disciples to follow. God, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on this gift of water. Oh, I'm so sorry that I got your shirt wet. I'm sorry, honey. 
God bless this gift of water and Teun who receives it, that he would be clothed in your compassion and love. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to invite all of you kids to take a seat, but gather around. And Teun, I'm going to... Hey, I'm your pastor. Isn't that awesome? I'm your pastor. And you know what? You know what we're going to do right now? We are going to publicly claim you as beloved, as a beloved child of Christ. Teun, I baptize you in the name of God, the creator, Jesus, the redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our sustainer. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh, God, thank you for this. I'm sorry, honey. Thank you for this beloved, beloved child of God. Uh, thank you for Teun and for all those that love him, for his mom and dad and for his grandparents and for all those that you will put in his life who will care for him and teach him about love and joy and hope and peace. Bless him as he walks and bless us as we get to walk alongside him. In your holy, holy, holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, um, congregation, I realize that um, you, you may or may not know um, Teun, but you know a kid. We all know a kid. We all have a, a child uh, in our lives. And so when you promise that you are going to help our children, like Teun, learn how to be compassionate and loving and forgiving, you are saying you're going to show up for those children in your life and remind them that they're beloved when they feel like they are not. That is what you say you're going to do. So I invite you now um, to join me in the response that is printed on the screen. With God's help, we pro proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Teun with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Amen. Amen. Yes. You splash in the waters of your baptism. Yes. Amen. Amen. I invite you, if you'd like, you can go to Sunday school or you can go um, to the nursery or you can stay here and worship. The scripture reading is from Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2 and 19 through 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O oh Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, 
I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. The Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you. And immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. <laughs> they went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders did say to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was very late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God.
Amen. <clears throat> oh, that that piece is is so good. It's called Gethsemane, and 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 that is the garden where Jesus went to to pray before he was led to the cross in his crucifixion. And you know, that's what looms in the background of Palm Sunday. Good Friday looms in the background. We know what's coming. We know what's coming, and therefore it's hard for us to stand in this in-between place. Will you pray with me? Oh God, remind us that tension is holy. And help us to sink in and be fully present in those places and moments of tension in our lives. And all of the fear and all of the hope. May we know that we are in a place where you abide and reside in us and we in you. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts, be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Palm Sunday marks a turning point on this journey of Lent. There's a point uh, in the wilderness where after you have been sustained, after you've been sustained by God's presence over and over and over again, uh, something begins to emerge. You begin to perceive a possibility that there might be life beyond this wilderness uncertainty that you've been living in and experiencing. And this is the journey we've been on as we walked alongside the Hebrew people through the wilderness. We saw the ways that God sustained them, gave them vision to follow the cloud and pillar of fire, gave them sustenance, water to nurture them from a rock of all places, gave them manna, from heaven, where the people were able to imagine and create and construct this tabernacle, this a mobile house of worship that God would go with them wherever they were, and they experienced healing by looking the serpent, the thing that bit them in the eye. 
And, and it's not unlike the disciples who remember a Jesus called from in and around Galilee to follow, to come and see. And when they followed, they did begin to see. They began to experience uh, Jesus feeding people, healing people, casting out demons, liberating people from their circumstances, from oppression, and even raising Lazarus from the dead. So when you look at the Hebrew people and the disciples and what they've experienced and witnessed, they have all had moments of sustenance in their uncertainty. And you know what? When you taste that sustenance long enough, something begins to emerge. And that something is hope. That is what happens on Palm Sunday. Uh, the people gather to welcome and usher Jesus into the holy city, and they have hope. They have hope that things could change. They have hope between what is and what's been and what might be. And if we're honest, it's a very uncomfortable place to be. Hope. Because we haven't quite let go of the past. We haven't quite let go of our hurt and our disappointment and our pain and our grief and our regret. We haven't quite let go of that. But we also haven't fully embraced the new future, the new thing, because it has yet to be fully realized. So we can't. We want to run past Good Friday straight to Easter, and we cannot because we do not yet know what will happen and exactly what the new thing God is doing will look like. And so what the people do on Palm Sunday is they have this framework, this image in their mind of, okay, a Messiah who comes will probably have a certain set of characteristics and way of doing things that's like what we already know. That's like a king someone who is strong and powerful and forceful and who wields that power to bring sweeping change in an instant. That, that is what the people imagine and know. Thank you, by the way, for Nancy Carney, who got me this cup holder. That is what the people know. And so this is what the people do on, on Palm Sunday, um, that day that Jesus enters the holy city. They cobble together this makeshift parade using whatever they can find. It's, it's like, a, it's like um, a, a grassroots almost protest that just happens. It's emergent where all of a sudden they realize, wow, Jesus is coming and he's actually entering Jerusalem, the, the city that, that lives under the shadow of the Roman Empire, where the religious institution, uh, the religious leaders, have been able to maintain a certain status quo, though the empire looms in the background, and Jesus comes to face all of that of which they are afraid. And so they cobble together this makeshift parade, uh, this protest that stands up to the empire and to the institution and to the ways that have always been. And they use uh, their coats and they use these branches uh, to construct this red carpet. And they're trying to uh, create this triumphant procession attempting to pass as a royal entrance but it doesn't quite fit. It doesn't quite fit because Jesus is not the Messiah who comes wielding power born of violence. Uh, they expect their Messiah to use the ways that they have already known, but then Jesus shows up and embodies humility, embodies forgiveness, embodies compassion. But see, the people, like us, are expecting God to show up in a way that makes sense to them. They're expecting God to show up in the ways that God had shown up before, through manna in the wilderness, through water from a rock. 
And so they try to create the conditions that will allow God uh, to do what God has already done again. And see, this is the thing. When we cling to the past, to what has been, uh, it's, it's, not because, um, it's not because we... It's not because we don't want something new. It's because there was a time when that past was something new. There was a time when that past uh, revealed another way to us. Uh, there was a time when uh, we participated in this ritual or tradition or sung a particular song or heard a particular scripture and it filled us with hope and the promise of possibility and something new. And so we cling to that. We cling to it so tightly because we want to experience it again. There's nothing wrong with that. But what Jesus has been trying to show people and what God had been trying to show the Hebrew people in the wilderness is that the only way to receive the next new thing is to loosen your grip on that which has already been. And we do that through hope. Now hope is the feeling or expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. And you know what? The truth is, if we are being honest, hope is uncomfortable because the implications of hope are dangerous. If we imagine that things could change, it threatens the way things have always been. It threatens our comfortability. It threatens the familiarity. And then it does things like, oh, hope. It does things like deconstructs and dismantles harmful theology preserved by institutions and the status quo. Hope is what leads to the toppling of empires. Hope is what allows us to feel joy again after we've lost our beloved, after we've received a terminal cancer diagnosis, after we have been to hell and back. It is hope that tells us we might live. But the question we face on Palm Sunday is, if we let go of all of that, our grief, our guilt, our regret, our disappointment, if we let go of the past, what will we be left with? If we let go of striving and expectation and the constant pressure to perform and competition, if we let go of all of that, what will we have? Will surrender and compassion and forgiveness and humility truly be enough, truly be the way that redeems us? And so, on Palm Sunday, we stand in that tension and we ask the question, will this Messiah really save us? Will we be redeemed? And you know what? If you came to church this morning hoping for some resolve, you picked the wrong day. Because there is no resolve on Palm Sunday. There is no resolve. We stand in that place on the precipice of what is to come without fully knowing. And we step in to the tension and trust that the Spirit is moving in and through us in that in-between liminal space. Will you pray with me? Oh God, you cultivate hope in us, and hope gives us an imagination. Uh, hope gives us a new way of being in the world that is freeing and liberating, a way that opens us to your spirit and changes us, transforms us in ways we cannot imagine, and that is scary. So we ask now that you will sit with us in our fear. You will sit with us as we imagine what might be and you will open us to that possibility that we would experience your presence with us in the tension of what is and what will be. In your holy and mysterious name we pray, amen. Amen. If you have a joy or a concern, now is the time to pass those prayer cards to the center aisle. And if you're joining us online, you can drop uh, your prayer requests in the chat. 
and we're going to uh, sing together this song, I Am Who You Say I Am, and I'm so glad, oh, it's, it's uh, gosh, uh, divine inspiration that we're singing this song the day that we baptize uh, Teun unexpectedly because this is the promise, the witness we just made, that, that he is beloved, that we are who God says we are, that we are beloved. Let us sing. Feel free to remain seated while we sing. Should we sing this in prayerfully? Amen. We come to this time in our service where, as a community, we listen. We listen to what's happening in one another's lives, what we're carrying in our hearts. And in our listening, we begin to see. We begin to see our neighbor. We begin to see each other. And, and our vision is broadened. And we begin to realize what we have in common, our humanity. And it's in that act of realizing and seeing each other through that ritual and spiritual discipline of prayer that we draw close to God and the holy through drawing closer to each other. So we name aloud our joys and we receive those joys with the response, loving God, we give you thanks. Actually, we're going to receive this morning, it's not in the slides because I'm changing it right now, uh, we're going to receive the joys um, with God is good all the time. And then we're even going to receive those concerns 
with the response, God is good all the time. And when you hear some of these concerns and you say that, God is good all the time, it's going to hurt a little bit. And that's the point. That's the tension of Palm Sunday. So we name aloud first uh, our joys. Uh, for Mary Weiner and Cheryl Jones and Lynn Nowicki, who worked in the yard yesterday preparing our landscape and our garden, thank you. God is good all the time. Having the executive editor of Lewis and Clark Environmental Law Review with me in church this morning. Woo! God is good all the time. For 38 wonderful years together, God is good all the time. A joy for deep gratitude for the incredible health care team on floor eight at the University of Washington Medical Center. They are so gifted and compassionate, gifting us with the hope of health and vitality. God is good all the time. Oh, for getting to be a snack helper at school. God is good all the time. For the blooming cherry blossoms, God is good all the time. For the spring in the air, the sun, warmer days, and my husband who got a promotion at work, God is good all the time. For the baptism of baby June today, God is good all the time. For Palm Sunday, Holy Week, and Easter that is coming, God is good all the time. And now we turn our attention to those concerns among us, to those things that weigh heavy on our hearts. Prayers for healing for our son Ryan, who was in a bike accident yesterday. He is doing okay, but very sore. God, you are good all the time for calming of nerves leading into and successful outcomes following multiple interviews this week. God is good all the time. For the family of Larry Lastman, a friend who died last week, God is good all the time. For a friend that needed to make an unthinkable decision in a twin pregnancy to choose which child to save, God is good all the time. For the people of Ukraine who continue to fight Russia without U.S. aid, God is good all the time. For Reverend Jan Bowlerjack and the asylum seekers at Riverton Park UMC, God is good all the time. For a family friend suffering from terminal illness, God is good all the time. For safety and protection for Jasmine, God is good all the time. For healing and hope for those with chronic illness, that they would feel God's presence even in the wilderness of pain and suffering, God is good all the time. Finding the balance of motherhood and a career God is good all the time. For our world full of violence, especially for the people of Gaza, Palestine, Israel, Ukraine, and Russia who have lost so many loved ones, God is good all the time. And finally, from one of our young disciples who apparently does not like eating carrots, the concern just says carrots. <laughs> God receives all of our concerns, people. God is good all the time. Thank you, God, for our young disciples who we are modeling and teaching how to pray. We bring all these things we've named aloud and all that we hold in our hearts, and we come before God. Let us pray. Oh, God, 
we proclaim that you are in fact good even though we're not quite sure if we really believe that. Because if you are good God, how? How is there so much pain and suffering in the world? If you are good, how? How are we struggling? If you promise us life, then why does it feel like we are barely surviving? Oh God, if you are good, then why? Why must we walk this path of heartache and pain and loss? We sit in the tension of the silence, not knowing how you will show up, when you will show up, not even imagining that the tomb might be empty because we have no frame of reference for that. All we know is that you have been with us before and you are with us now and we have hope that you will be with us in the days ahead and in what is to come. May it be so, O oh God. Strengthen us for the journey. Give us an imagination and eyes to see and help us claim our agency that we might be a part of the new thing that you are about to do and that we would be open to the movement of your spirit in us. We pray all these things in your holy and mysterious name and in the name of the one who we ask, save us, and who taught us to pray. Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, now and forever. Amen. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King famously wrote, true peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. We gather our offerings today, challenging ourselves to live out our virtues, even when that means the discomfort of conflict. For the God of peace invites those who hold privilege to the work of liberation. We gather our offerings that it may be so. You can make a financial contribution to the ministries of Tibbetts online through our website or by placing your gift in the offering plate at the back of the sanctuary when you exit. Let us pray. To courage, to justice, to the work of liberation, we dedicate our offerings, O oh God. Even amidst the chaos of callous empires, accompany us as we co-create your kingdom of peace in the here and now. Amen. Please rise while we sing this great hymn of the faith about this Palm Sunday and the praise and adoration to, that belongs to the Lord. John? <laughs>
Amen. I invite you to remain standing uh, for a few brief announcements before our closing song. Fellowship Hour today is hosted by Sarah Carter, um, and the Baking Club met yesterday, and so you're getting the treats from the Baking Club. Um, so you can make your way to the parlor down the hall after the service um, and have a cup of coffee and uh, enjoy uh, the treats that the Baking Club has prepared for us. This is Holy Week. And so on Thursday, we have a service with Admiral UCC at 7 p.m., um, just down California. And then on Friday, we have a joint service with them here in our house at 7 p.m. Listen, Easter doesn't make sense without Good Friday, okay? So I hope you will come, um, and it's a good service. I hope you will come and be a part of that. And then on Saturday, which is that Holy Saturday in between time between Good Friday and Easter, a week have the labyrinth set up in Adam's Hall from 11 to 1, and so you're invited at any time to come and walk the labyrinth, and somebody will be there to provide uh, instruction um, and tell you a little bit about that, and it will also be up Sunday after the service. And next Sunday is Easter. We have an Easter egg hunt for the kids following the service. We have some incredible music planned. I hope you will be a part of that. And finally, um, our outreach team is seeking support of the Riverton Park UMC ministry to those seeking asylum. So take a look at the weekly announcements. If you don't get those, you can go to our website, click subscribe in the top right-hand corner, or click news and events, and you can see or announcements, see the ones that have passed. Uh, they are looking for a specific um, items needed donations uh, that folks um, are in deep need of. So you can bring donations to the church, and they'll be delivered um, in mid-April, there's a bin in the foyer out there. Uh, our closing song, our closing song this morning is a Blessed Be Your Name. Wherever we find ourselves in the wilderness, uh, when we find ourselves standing on the edge of the next new thing, God is there and we sing Blessed Be God's Name wherever we are. So I invite you to raise your voices and join us in our closing song.
Amen, amen. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God. May we know that you are, in fact, good all the time. Walk with us through Holy Week. Be with us and remind us that we are not alone and you are, in fact, about to do a new thing. In your holy name, amen. Go in peace. I told, I told the, uh, I the I said, oh, I'm still hot. Hold on. They heard me at, they heard me on the live stream, like, talking about taking this poop because my mic was hot and I didn't know it. So that was kind of funny. Hi. Man. Yes. Beautiful service. Let me turn this off real quick.